Hi, welcome to Board Gems, my regular video series in which I cover older board game gems, games that aren't talked about much anymore, but maybe they should be. I take requests. Today's video is a request. Um, I did take some time off and I'm now trying to get back into the saddle, so I decided I'd choose one of the easier ones. The request I'm fulfilling for this video is Elkfest. Elkfest is a two-player game. In fact, it's from Cosmos's two-player line of games. It's designed by Herman Huber. Uh, it's not a very well-known designer. The only other game of his that I'm familiar with is one called Abdi Post, which is a pretty old Gold Seeper game. Now, if you're like me and you look at this cover and you say, those aren't elk, those are moose, I am relatively sure you're from North America. In Europe, what we in North America, in Canada, for example, would call moose, they would call elk. Whereas in Canada, an elk is a different thing. The name is actually a little bit of a pun. There is the famous elk test, and this is not actually famous in North America as far as I know, but as far as I know, it is actually quite famous in Germany. I know of at least one other board game that references the elk test. Elk test what? Elk test practicants. So Sweden developed a safety test called the elk test, which was designed to test a car's ability to swerve a large obstacle such as a moose at say 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, Mercedes famously failed this test at flipping over onto its uh, roof, I believe, and that's probably why it's famous in Germany. So this is a little bit of a pun, because that in German is the Elsch test, whereas this is the Elschfest. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's the most interesting part about this game. It's a two-player game, ages eight and up, actually younger people could probably play. And box it takes about 15 minutes. It really depends on how long a game you want to make because it is completely adjustable how long a game you want to make. It originally came out in 1999 and it's a two player dexterity game. It's a flicking game. The idea is, is that each player has a moose that they start on their side of the table. You have two kind of river banks, these little wooden platforms which are placed on either end of the table between the players and players take turns flicking these little wooden discs which represent sort of stones in the river that you're trying to use to have your moose cross the river to get to the other side and you're trying to get your moose to cross before the other player's moose pretty simple game i pretty much just explained it but anyway let's go through a rules explanation let me show you how to play Before you start, decide who will be the light-colored moose and who will be the dark-colored moose. Players are going to take their riverbank of their color and place it on their side of the table, and you want to have some distance between them. At least a ruler's length, so 12 inches, 30 centimeters. The rulebook recommends a typical distance of 20 inches or 50 centimeters. This is about 20 inches, 50 centimeters. Each player gets the moose of their color, which they place on the riverbank, and three stones, these wooden uh, discs, which they place to the right of their riverbank, just in a row like that. I suppose if the players agree, they can have them on the left. <laughs> as long as they're on sort of opposite sides. There's no rule about how far a distance the player can simply choose how far they want to have them. Your goal is to get your moose across the river before the other player's moose. So if my moose here is able to get onto this riverbank before that player's is able to reach this riverbank, then I win. In order to do that, you're going to be moving, flicking these stones to create a path for your moose's hooves. The moose is not allowed to touch the table surface, the, the water. The table is water. Pick a start player. The start player is going to 
take one of their discs that's on their side, just one, and flick it, just a single motion, like so. At any point during your turn, before or after your flicks, you may move your moose. And your moose always has to be supported by wood, either the riverbank or these stones, like so. So the start player's turn is over after one flick, and then the other player, the second player, gets to flick two. And from that point on, every turn, back and forth, you're going to flick two stones. And you can flick the same stone twice, that's fine, but your first three flicks have to be these three stones. As soon as the three stones are in play, then you can flick any stone that's on the table, except stones that are being supported by moose. By the way, I'm very bad at this game. In this example, I could actually move the moose all the way over to here. Keep in mind that you always have to do every step. So you wouldn't be able to jump to here. You have to be able to make sure that each step is supported, like so, and then like so. You're allowed to test the distance. So for example, this is awfully close. Oh. <laughs> One kind of neat thing about the way the moose are designed, because they have a little bit of a curved um, hooves, I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, but what tends to happen is when you're testing to see whether the moose is able to be supported by two stones, if it's very close, like on the edge, it tends to push the stones further apart. So that's how you can actually tell that, oh, that's not going to be supported. So the game is simply going to continue like that. Of course, at this point, players are generally flicking their own stones, but technically none of these stones are owned by any of the players. And once the moose are kind of in the middle and the stones are all kind of, you know, mixed up between them, then obviously the, you have to remember there are no stones that are yours or stones that are your opponents. You can flick anything as long as it's not being supported by a moose. Now it is possible for a moose to fall into the river. This can happen two ways. One, you're trying to do a test and you fail, it doesn't, doesn't quite support. Or what can sometimes happen too is that a stone gets flicked and knocks over a stone that's uh, being supported. <laughs> oh, hey, all right. There you go. It doesn't matter which moose it is, the player who caused the moose to fall into the river is penalized. For one thing, their turn is immediately over. You reset everything to as close as it possibly can, all the stones and all the moose to the position it was in before the accident. And then the next player, the player who didn't make the mistake, then gets to take three actions instead of two. And that's it. The players continue to flick the stones and move their moose. And if the moose is able to get all the way to their opponent's riverbank, they win. Who requested this game? Stand up, show yourself. Oh my god, why suggest this game for me to do? <laughs> I mean, it's old, I guess. Um, I don't know what to say about it, honestly. There was a commenter who, uh, seemed to appreciate my ability to talk for 30 minutes about a game as simple as Picomino. I'm definitely going to let that person down in this video. There really isn't a whole lot to talk about in this game. What you saw in the how to play part, that's it. It's a flicking game and there aren't a huge number of flicking games out there, so it's worthwhile to compare them. The most famous games of that type are Pitch Car and, well, Crokinole. These are very well regarded games, very good games. To get into a game like uh, Pitch Car or Crokinole could set you back a few hundred dollars, depending on how much you want to get into it. You know, you want to buy a nice Crokinole set, or you're not going to be satisfied with the base game of Pitch Car. You want to add some 45 degree turns, maybe some two level things going on. You're going to be sinking a lot of money in 
this is or was a really cheap game. When you compare it to Pitch Car, in Pitch Car you're trying to be certainly precise, you're aiming where you're flicking your disc, but besides that you're trying to flick it as far as possible. And obviously within reason, like if you, obviously there's a, a condition there, right? Whereas if you flick too hard, it's going to go off the track. But generally speaking, within reason, you're aiming, but you're also flicking hard. And in this game, you're not doing that. You're not trying to flick hard. In fact, you're trying to flick soft because you're trying to flick the pieces to be right in front of your moose. Flicking softly is an extremely difficult skill. This game is all about skill. There's no randomness in the game, no luck. How well a player does depends on their ability to flick accurately and softly. And in that sense, it doesn't have a, a lot of competition. There aren't a, a lot of games like that. So, I mean, that's a point in Elkfest's favor. Having said that, my experience is that the ability for people to flick softly that ability varies wildly between two people. So some people are really good at it and some people are really bad at it. And so what's going to happen is two players are going to play and one player is going to have a pretty easy time and the other person is going to get super frustrated with the game, right? I mean, the game is short. So it's I'm not going to hold it too much against it. If it's frustrating, you know, play again or play something else. It's a nice diversion. You will probably want to set up a practice game or two before playing the real game. And the game is short enough that you can do that. Because the game also differs a great deal based on the playing surface. So somebody mentioned to me uh, that Elkfest was, to them, the best pub game you can get. It's certainly very simple. It's got uh, no cards or little pieces really that you can lose. It's just the two moose, the two riverbanks, and the six stones, and that's it. Whereas you have a game like Pitch Car and Crokinole that have boards as part of the experience, and that is in fact why they're so expensive, this one just uses the tabletop. Keeps the cost way, way low, but it does mean different experiences based on the different tables you play on. So you'll want to play on a pretty smooth table usually. <laughs> the person who mentioned this is a, is a great pub game it occurred to me that I need to go to classier pubs. Because <laughs> all the pubs I go to have sticky tables, you know, from the, the beer or the finish coming off or something off the tables. And it's... <laughs> There's two ways to play, and you can choose whether to play the easier way, which is you can walk around the table to line up your shot, or the more challenging way in which you stay seated. Uh, I prefer the stay seated way. Not because it's more challenging, but just because I don't want to have to get up all the time and walk around. But I mean, that's the difference between Pitch Car and Crokinole. Whereas one game, you're expected to, like in Pitch Car, you're expected to walk around the table to line up your shot. But Crokinole has the one butt cheek rule. You have to keep one butt cheek on your chair at all times. So you can shift, but you can't sit up. So I prefer using the one butt cheek rule for this just because it makes it, even though it's harder, it does make it more casual because it's just like, well, I don't have a very good shot, but whatever, you know, you're not, you're not caring too, too much, right? I just feel walking around the table to line up your shot is taking this game way more seriously than it probably deserves. The fact that you can customize that experience by choosing the table surface to play on, choosing whether to walk around the table or stay seated, or even choosing the length of the game by choosing how far the, the riverbanks start from each other makes it a somewhat of a customizable game that's kind of neat. So it's important to note that the game doesn't really have any interaction, which is fine. There's lots of multiplayer solitaire games or whatever. And of course you are competing in the shared space and you are flicking the same stones. But I don't know, when I first heard this game described, I thought it would be kind of fun and funny to, you know, flick stones and knock the other player's moose into the river, right? That would be funny. But in fact, the game punishes you quite severely for doing that. So in the end, players just do kind of their own their own thing, honestly. Um, my son has tried to kind of set up the stones at the end of his turn so that, you know, I have a bad shot on my turn. But in general, it's really not worth wasting the action to do that. Unless, if you're like my son, you know that your opponent is bad at the game, 
So just take one shot, get the 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 stone way out of the way, and then you know your opponent's probably going to need two turns to try to flick that back because they're not very good. You probably don't want to play this game for too long because the longer the game, the just more obvious the differences in skill levels are going to be. Keep the game short, 15 minutes tops, I would say. So this is just a super simple table flicking game that de definitely does not fill the same niche as something like a pitch car or crokinole, which are, in my opinion, objectively better, but are also bigger experiences. And like I said, more expensive experiences. If you just want to goof around and flick, Elkfest is one of the better ones. Elkfest has really only been surpassed, in my opinion, by one game, which is called Push It. And this is a game that came out of England a few years ago, self-published. So at the time of recording, this is actually not an easy game to find, but I think it's in waves. I think, assuming that the publisher is satisfied with the sales that it had, it was on sale at amazon.co.uk when it was available. Um, it's probably between print runs, assuming that the previous print runs sold out and the response has been pretty good. I should hope that the publisher will uh, print new versions of this. This would be the way to go if you can get a copy. Um, it's not that expensive. It's, you can get, I mean, when they reprint this, assuming they reprint it, you would, of course, be able to get this new, not so much with Elkfest. Uh, this can play up to four players. And it's just a kind of a nicer, I feel a nicer presentation. So this replaces Elkfest for me. But like I said, at the time of recording, this is not easy to find. If you are interested and you come across a copy uh, quite easily and or cheaply, it's definitely worth checking out. Um, it's goofy fun. And if you can find it easily or cheaply, I would probably hold off on that and then maybe later on see if you can find Push It, which to me pretty much perfectly replaces uh, Elkfest for me. Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Elkfest don't stop being good just because newer games come out. Take care.